The Effects of Culture on Women by Charisse, Bertha, Janet, and Melinda. In the 1880s, the Jewish population was recorded at 7,800,000 people. Presently, nearly 3,900 years later, the population is recorded at 14.4 million. 44% of them reside in Israel, 39.5 in the United States. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Jewish women in America were confined to mostly domestic life. They had few interactions with non-Jews, and they maintained the rituals of their Jewish culture at, home, at the homes. And they were responsible for imparting moral and religious consciousness to their children. In the mid to late 20th century, their role in public life increased, and they began to run charities and do other events, but still primarily among the Jewish population. They became more involved in the synagogues, and with the women's rights movements of the 1960s and 70s, there was the Reform Movement, and in 1972, the first woman rabbi was in America. With the conservative movement became equal treatment in marriage and equal access to rituals and leadership roles within the Jewish community. Okay, hi, I'm Mindy, and my portion of the project is on Judaism in Israel and how the, um, the culture of Judaism affects women. Um, Israel's population is 75% Jewish, and the Orthodox Jews make up 20% of Israel's population. Um, Judaism is an orthopractic religion, which means it's a lifestyle religion, um, and not only affects religious beliefs um, when you're at the synagogue, but also dictates um, many aspects of, of just everyday life. Um, for example, after the wedding night, women shave their head um, traditionally, and then they keep their head covered from that point on. Uh, women do not socialize with men other than their husband. They actually even have very limited interaction with their rabbi because uh, he's a man, and they mainly just socialize with other women. They even have regulations about talking to even their own husband out in public. Um, the mikvah is a ritual purification after menstruation. So um, after their period, women go um, usually to the basement of the synagogue and take like a traditional bath to cleanse, to show like a cleansing and a starting anew. Um, arranged marriages are the norm. So most marriages are arranged and marriages for life. In order to be divorced, men must actually, in Israel, there's a rabbinate council, which is where you request um, anything regarding birth, death, marriage, that all goes through them. And men actually have to request a divorce. Women are unable to request a divorce. Um, so one in six homes have spousal abuse. So even if a woman is feels she's in danger or she's getting beat by her husband, she's unable to request a divorce. He has to request that. Um, and then some men believe, the more orthodox men believe the Torah gives the right for um, men to strike their wives. So they would even argue that what they're doing is okay. Um, some of the women's traditions, uh, men tend to do more synagogue related things, especially in the past. Um, women's um, requirements are in the religion are to care for the sick, prepare food, um, organize births and bar mitzvahs. So women have a very... Um, strong social group. Uh, studies show that women feel a lot of support from the other women in their culture um, and their, as compared to the men because they don't feel as much of a connection with the rabbi or the men. Um, they have more of a connection with the other women. Um, the feminist movement in America is slowly reaching the Jews in Israel. Um, since 2002, um, there have been over 30 min, min yamin. Um, and what that is, is that is a singing service where men and women are allowed to sing. Um, prior to the first one in Israel in 2002, women were never allowed to sing in public. Uh, it was considered rude or crude for a woman to sing in public. So that's making a big change. Um, women are starting to take legal action too. In 2013, um, the women won the right to pray at the Western Wall. Um, they actually appealed to the court above the rabbis and were able to get that right. Hello, I'm Janet Rodriguez, and I will be talking about Judaism and women's roles and lifestyles in other countries. Judaism is global. There are different ethnicities and cultures all around the world with different types of backgrounds. I will be focusing on Ethiopia and Argentina. Ethiopian Jews are known as Falasha and Beta Israel. 
Jews immigrated to Ethiopia around the 4th century. Ethiopian Jews have many struggles. They were not welcomed by Christianity. They were known as landless people, and they had their wrists taken away from them. Wrists meaning land, which is why they were named the landless people. Finally, they retained their independence in the 17th century. Ethiopian Jewish women's roles include their beautiful pottery making. They're known to marry at a very early age, and they are very family-oriented. Argentine Jews have the biggest population in Latin America. There are more than 140 Jewish communities, making it the sixth largest Jewish community in the world. There are also 70 Jewish educational institutions. Argentine Jewish women's roles include similar roles from the Ethiopian Jewish woman. They are also very family oriented. They have few career options available, which include teachers and midwives. Other than that, they become homemakers and have their lives revolve around their families. Jewish communities continue to grow. Women's roles are evolving every single day. Judaism is changing and evolving as well. Thank you very much. Jewish culture, religion, and cuisine. Religion and food. In Judaism, it is believed that there is a direct link between God and food. In the Bible passage from Exodus 12:17, God's word directly supports the literal way the Jews have created their menus. For instance, during Passover, no leavened bread is to be eaten. Passover is the celebration commemorating the time when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. The Old Testament says, that when the Israelites were freed, everyone left so quickly that they could not wait for the bread to rise. The Seder plate is the focal point of the proceedings on the first two nights of Passover. It is usually served on a silver dish or an ornate platter. Placed on the plate are the ceremonial foods which include matzah, shank bone, egg, bitter herbs, sherikot paste, and carpus vegetables. I had the pleasure of sitting down with my friend Randy Weinstein, who practices Judaism and attends the Temple Anshe Shalom in Olympia Fields. She kindly shared a story with me about cooking with her mom and grandmother for Passover. She told me that traditionally, the women would do all the cooking for the holidays. She also noted that historically, only the women would do the cooking and the men would do the prayer services. However, in today's world, both men and women share the responsibility. In this video, Randy tells me a story of what happens after the Seder meal with her and her family at Passover. So was there a, a way to end the meal? Or, uh, oh, we like sang a song. We sang a song at the, at the Seder and then we all eat because we're starving. Yes, it's taking so long. Do you remember what the name of the song was? Um, Hot God Young. What was it? Hot God Young. Okay. And it's a, it's a long, long song. And, you're like, and the whole family sings? Yes. Okay. So, so like, that's... let's finish this so we can eat. <laughs> okay, yeah. And so after the meal, was there like anything else that you did or was that just just socializing? Yes, there's something called the Afrikoman, which you hide the matzah, just a piece of matzah anywhere in the house and the kids look for it. It's kind of like an Easter egg hunt. Oh, okay. And then whoever finds it gets a little bit of What did you get? Well, $5, $10. Nice. Price. <laughs> yes, less. yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that pretty much ended your Passover celebration? Yes. Or, okay, and that was just pretty much like socializing? That's socializing. So lastly, this is like the last question, is that um, when, because you had said that it takes, like the meal takes time yes. to like complete. So what time at night did you finish? The meal? Yeah. Um, like 9 o'clock. Okay, and then what time would your party go to? Just one-ish. Really? Yeah. Was there drinking? Of course. Was there? Yep. So you do like four blessings of the wine, and each time you have wine. What kind of wine would you drink? Monk and David. Good stuff. What else? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Randy. I appreciate thank you. To conclude my video, I'd like to share a few pictures of the famous Manny's Deli on Jefferson Street in Chicago. My daughter and I had the pleasure of having lunch there last week. Manny's is a Jewish 
cafeteria-style deli that opened in 1942 and prides itself on using the same recipes that they used when they first opened. That's Manny's sign in Chicago. And here's my lunch tray, which I had matzo ball soup, potato latke, which is potato pancake, a little corned beef pastrami, and a beet salad. There's the inside of Manny's. Very nice place. Well, that concludes my video. Thanks for watching.